So welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Marianne Hauser, and I'm the Senior Partner at Serendipity Action Coach of Central North Carolina. Today, I have Gavin Timms, owner of Daftco, as my guest. You know, I just watched a social post on Gavin's LinkedIn, and he shared that in business, the most important thing is taking massive, imperfect action. So I can't wait to hear a little bit more about that. Today, we're going to be talking with him about his business, his journey to business ownership, his challenges, his best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to run a virtual um, support or virtual assistant business. So if this is the first time you're on my channel, please be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one so that you can help build your business um, going into the future. So Gavin, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Marianne. I'm, I'm excited to be here. So thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So in um, in all honesty, I'm actually a client of Gavin's. My virtual assistants that we use come from his company. And so I'm really excited to take a little bit of a deeper dive into how he got started. So, so Gavin, generally speaking, give us an overview of your organization and what your key focus is. Absolutely. So um, I've been working with, you know, virtual assistants in different countries, uh, helping other businesses since 2016. Um, I started in the real estate space um, as a real estate investor. Um, I'm also a real estate coach. And obviously through coaching other businesses in, in the investment space, I used to hire virtual assistants for my clients. So that's kind of uh, how it started. And then we evolved going into then creating DAFCO. Uh, which is an outsourcing company that will deliver across all industries. So not just real estate, uh, but all industries, you know, across the country, um, you know, coaches like yourself, uh, medical, transportation, uh, accounting, uh, insurance. Um, so pretty much, like I said, anything that we can kind of help and assist to uh, to give personnel to all the businesses, affordable rate to help grow. Awesome. Yeah, we've got an awesome virtual assistant on our team and she's helping us with marketing and HubSpot and social media and so many other things. So yeah. um, tell me a little bit about your current ownership, ownership structure for your organization. Are you the sole founder or owner? Are there outside investors? How did you get this kicked off? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, I am business partners with another co a guy called Shane. Uh, obviously, I'm originally from England. I live in the US. I don't know if the accent uh, you could tell. <laughs> um, he's also in, in England as well. So both had businesses, um, both, you know, successful in our own right in, in terms of the industries that we were in. Uh, and then we came together to build originally a marketing company. That's what we were looking at. So when we came together, we're like, you know, we're both marketers. That's what we do. We're in sales. Um, so we started to look and branch off. And that's where obviously then the, the virtual assistant space, because in, in real estate, we use virtual assistants to lead gen, right, to get us leads. Sure. So we thought, well, let's go into the virtual assistant space first. And then obviously that's transpired to now being our sole focus right now in uh, in obviously building that. So that's what we do. So there's me and him, 50-50 partners as the owners of the company. And then, uh, you know, we we build down from there. Awesome. Um, partnerships are interesting. I can't wait to hear more about that as we become friends into the future. So tell me a little bit about right now. What role do you play in the business? Yeah, so we have different, uh, me and Shane, uh, you know, we obviously do a lot of collaboration together. I think that's where business partners do come in handy. As long as you're on the same page and and you have the same vision, OK, I think that's important. And then we can help put things in place. So my goal really is obviously revenue generating things. So I'm more like working, bringing sales in, growing the business. Um, that's kind of what I do, like focusing on in the business. And then he's a little bit more into the systems, getting the marketing out. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, I, I guess our main key roles that are different are. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's a good lead in because my next question was how much do you actually spend in in the business versus working on like strategy and planning? But it sounds like you've got that pretty well balanced out. 
Yeah, absolutely. We, um, I work on the business, uh, not not in it. So I work hundred percent on it, uh, which gives us the you know the time to be able to grow it out uh, and work with a team. So you know we have a great team. We we're really big on working with the right people. So we have our own virtual assistants in the business. We obviously have some staff as well in America. Um, and, you know, we constantly working with them, developing and, and always trying. You made a key point uh, in your intro, taking massive action, right, um, which I think is very important. Now, that does have its problems sometimes. Sometimes I'm already running before I'm walking, uh, but that's just my personality. So you're always trying to shape a little bit, make changes along the way, but definitely working on the business allows us to do that. Well, I love what I loved about that quote is to take massive imperfect action because, you know, in my experience, I've seen so many business owners wait for things to be perfect before they pull the trigger. And it's okay to pull the trigger when you're 90% there and adjust and, and you know, realign along the way to get back on the right track. Um, and so I'm going to actually share that quote uh, several times, at least at least this week, while it's still top of mind for me, because we are called action coach, not for, you know, not because it's theory coach, it's let's take some action and get some stuff done. So um, I think you and I are very much on the same page when it comes to that. So you've really given us a good idea that you can serve pretty much any industry. So if I'm in the audience, the to, you know my question is, how would I know if I'm a good fit? I'm a good fit, really, if I have any um, any work that I'm currently doing that would be better served if I could outsource it so that I could move on to growing and strategizing in my business, much like you have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing that we do, and I'd get the audience to kind of think about, is kind of outsource your weaknesses and play to your strengths. Okay. So, you know, in the real estate space, something that is like updating HubSpot, organizing tasks, sending out maybe contracts or emails. These are like admin tasks, for instance, based on this example. Um, my time in the real estate space was always, I needed to be on the phone you know, locking up deals, talking to buyers. So I always had a saying that if I'm not on the phone, I'm not making money. So what I did was I outsourced the tasks that were tedious that someone else could do, which then gave me more time to focus on a higher generating activity like sales uh, to grow the business. So that's how I would start is, is look and say, you know, if you're editing videos, does is that a good use of your time? If you're sitting there going, you know, you could be doing direct mail, you're st stuffing envelopes at night. You know, you could be doing research that someone else could do for you, uh, posting on social media someone could do. So there's, there's a lot of different jobs that zap a lot of your time that really your time could be spent doing better, better things that are going to generate and grow your business. Boy, don't I know it. Um, <laughs> I'm a prime example. So, you know, you're not the first virtual assistant company I've heard about since, yep. um, you know, since running this business. And you hear a lot more recent, you know, in, in recent months about this phenomenon of using virtual assistants. What makes your business unique and why would a customer choose you or a client choose you over somebody else? Yeah. And we looked at this. This is kind of one of our, our big things that we focused on. And there's kind of like two or three things. Number one is that we will replace a virtual assistant for free at any time. So, Marianne, let's say you've been with us for a year and something happens. Your virtual assistant moves on, you know, whatever. You guys stop working together. We have a problem. We will then give you another give you go through the same process of interviews the way that we do get you the right clients for the position and you don't have to pay for that so what a lot of companies do is they have a setup fee normally of about 500 to a thousand dollars before you even start to even look for somebody um, so that's one thing where we will replace free just because we believe in you know it's not your fault and it might not be our fault but we're definitely going to work with you on on finding that replacement so that's one big Very thing good. Uh, the awesome. second thing is you will have an account manager in the US. We're very big on this. Now, as much as we love other countries that we work with, you know, we all have the industries, you know, let's say the airlines or we're calling the bank and we're stuck online and we're getting sent here and sent there and we get, 
you know, a lot of foreign speakers that don't have the answers. It can get frustrating as business owners. So we wanted to, you know, create something where you had a personal contact to someone in the in the US for you is Candace. OK, that you can text, you can email that's efficient. That if you have any problems that we will deal with directly with you again, no one else seems to do that. That's normally outsourced to whichever country that you're working with. And it's just that level of service that will get better results, you know, for you and, and make you happy, basically. Happy customer. Yeah. Candace has been awesome, by the way. So thanks. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Candace is great. And is there one more thing you wish people knew about your business? Um, the other big thing is, is I would just say, look, like, come and have a conversation with us. And the reason being is, is that most people are blown away when they see the talent that gets presented, okay? So our biggest thing is, is well, outsourcing VAs, you know, in another country, you know, you're thinking thick accents, you know, you, you go, the, the mind goes to the negative. And then when we actually bring people to the interview, they're like, they sound like the, they live in America. I mean, you can't even really tell. They have a slight accent. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? Like, and these are, educated people as well like that you're getting they have you know degrees that they're, they're they're educated um you know in their fields so i would say our biggest thing is is that i'm working on right now from brand and and getting the awareness of how good the talent pool actually is um because when we send a recording going hey this is an example they're all like oh i'm blown away i can't believe it because we think, and I don't know if you, had, I mean, I haven't asked you that. I don't know what your experience and what you thought before you, you had them. Um, Actually, I really wasn't sure what to expect, but RVA has been great. Yes, you're right. She has a little bit of an accent, um, but we've just got her hooked up with a phone system. She's calling our prospects and confirming appointments, and she's been just absolutely fine. I mean, I don't know that anybody will know that she's from another country when they when she calls because her phone system is the same phone system I use. Um, so we use Zoom phone and it works beautifully and it's tied to yeah. our HubSpot. So I get a recording Tracks. of every conversation that she has. And so far we've been really, really pleased. Um, Fantastic. So now this leads me to, you know, we've got under, we've an understanding of your unique selling proposition, but there's other business owners out there that are going to be listening to this. When you have a business like yours, it's a, a little bit unique. It leads me to ask you some questions about marketing because it's so vital to every business out there. I'm always curious, what percentage of your monthly sales is typically invested back into your marketing budget? Um, yeah, I mean, it will it will change, but I always say a minimum probably of, you know, we like to stick aside at least 25%. Um, that will that will be parked aside um, to to grow the business um, because you know leads are the lifelong thing of a business so without leads we have nothing right I I come from more of a sales background but without any leads I can't close anything right and it could be for clients and this goes for pretty much any business you know we've got to generate leads especially if we're talking to business owners, right? That's our main thing is we are marketers, right? And if you are going, well, I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm not a great marketer, you have to bring somebody in that's going to run your marketing, do your marketing, help with your marketing. Because again, generating the lead is what's going to grow the business and obviously keep you in business. Yeah. And once you finally work with a business coach, it's also once we've got all those leads, how do we get our conversion rate up, right? That's another big part of marketing that sometimes people don't always focus on. Um, so the, my next marketing question for you is, what is the number one marketing strategy that's brought you the most business? Um, I would say there is two. One was uh, running ads like Google ads, okay? Um, I would say that would be, um, that would be one. And then second to that would be affiliate marketing. Um, you know, going with like-minded people, 
uh, that are trying to help and, and serve others. So again, if you don't mind me using you as an example, you know, you being an affiliate, uh, we always like to say, look, you know, the product, you know, that we offer or the service that we offer will speak for itself. So the first thing is, is come and try us, right? Why were you going to come and say, oh yeah, you should do this or refer us if, you know, well, you got to test us, right? So our goal is, is make you happy, provide for you, make sure that you're on board and then say, hey, we want you to be an affiliate. And then that will help obviously, you know, grow our business in the right way with the right people. Because you're going to attract, for you, for instance, are going to attract the people that we want to work with. Does that make sense? And I'm, I'm it really absolutely big on does. That. Yeah. In fact, I was giving referrals to Candace for probably several weeks before I even knew that an affiliate program existed. I certainly am not, you know, I'm not in business to make a few bucks off of affiliate marketing, yeah. but I knew the results I was having with my VA. And so a couple of clients were asking me, do you know a good, um, you know, person to help me with either cold calling or whatever their you know, their need was. And I immediately thought of you guys. So yeah, I have yeah. several clients now who are using your services and are absolutely thrilled right now, which is great. And so I have no qualms about giving further referrals. And the fact that I make a little bit on the back end has nothing to do whether you, whether we had that program or not, I'm out there to help other business owners find ways to streamline and you were just the right answer for me at the right time. And it makes it easy then to refer because you know, I can tell you in the past, I have referred other businesses, you know, some of my clients to other businesses that I've met through networking and I haven't always been a hundred percent happy. So now I will never refer someone if I haven't used that product or service myself first. Um, yep. And so, yeah, I have very, um, very high regard for what you guys are doing. So Thank we've you. spent a bunch of time focused on the business and sharing a few of your best practices for the audience. I'd like to take a step back and dive into your journey just a little bit more. Um, what has been the most memorable um, roadblock or hurdle that you were challenged with that maybe you were forced to overcome as you built this business? Um, I would say, um, probably growing, trying to grow maybe too quickly. Um, as I know, you know, from being in business, uh, sometimes you bring two business owners that are successful in their own right in other businesses, you know, we wanted to make things happen faster than sometimes business allows right and it, and it could be through because there's always a process in place right from you know we have a certain way that we interview and run things like we can only go at the speed of what we can control and then you as in the client right because maybe you're busy and we're trying to get you on a final interview and, and things just take longer so i'd say the biggest thing that you know that going into into this was we were trying to make things happen and go faster than probably what we needed to. Um, and if we would have just slowed down, right? But it, but I still stand by, take massive imperfect action. So I don't regret it. It's looking back now and saying, yes, there's things that we could have done differently, right? There's marketing mm -hmm. that could have gone in better areas. You know, there's services or systems that we put in place that we probably didn't need yet. Um, but that's hindsight, right? At the end of the day, we still we are still building, we're still growing. So the, the business was still moving in the right direction. So I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, it does. Awesome. So we, I just asked you to go look backwards. Now let's take a look into the future. Where do you see this business in the next three to five years? Um, I think in the next three to five years that this is, this is going to be huge. Uh, I really do. Uh, because I think, as business owners, and it doesn't matter, we work with people that are huge companies, right? That may be generating 500 million plus a year, right? But then obviously smaller business entrepreneurs. And I always feel that there's a need when it comes to the cost. Because a lot of business people need, need the money. Um, a lot of people need the money uh, to, to, 
to, you know, to grow a business, but they don't have that much, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So something that's affordable that you can get going again, this could be putting into marketing, helping virtual assistants grow on the marketing for lead gen. It could be getting your time back in your business so you can refocus, you know, all of them, all of them things. Um, awesome. So, yeah. And so what's your approach to goal setting then? How many goals do you normally set at a time and how do you document them? What's the time frame when you're planning your future for this business? Yeah, so we, I always do, I always like to, you know, when me and Shane got together, we always like to do the, you know, the dream big, right? Mm -hmm. We always, we always like to do a, uh, a shoot for the stars. Does that make sense? Um, and do the impossible, <laughs> if that makes sense. So grow <laughs> something that's that's big, that's out there, right? Because if you fall short, you're still doing very well. So I like to have an end goal of like, you know, building the business to X amount of VAs, uh, and and that's going to be like over like over the next five years. And then we break it down into short term goals, okay? Which is what do we control on a day to day basis that's going to get the outcome. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So, so if the, and, would... and I'm yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, and I, I do believe that the things that we do that we focus on a day to day is gives us the outcome overall. So a lot of business owners are like, we got to make money, we got to close this deal, we got to do this, and all their energy is going on the end thing. But it's like if you do the day to day steps, the outcome will automatically happen. So it's just retraining your mind on what you're doing on a day to day to get that. Gotcha. So we're almost to the end. I just have a few more questions. And this one is focused around building a great team. I know that Candice has been a great, um, you know, contact person for me. But if you think about your team, are there many leaders that you're working to develop in your team? Always. Everyone that we hire in any pretty much position that work for us directly have the ability to grow. So it's down to them. They have the runway and the platform. They know what they need to do to get there um, because that's what we want. We, we don't want, we want to build and level everyone to level up. One, if they want to, if they have the vision to. So we're definitely big on that, you know? So, awesome. yeah. So what areas of training do you think your people might need most in the next six months to a year based on the current business climate and where your business is heading? Um. So just just say, repeat that one more time. Sorry. Yeah, like what areas of training do you think your people might need most? Um, I would say it's it's often the 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 ongoing. I think training is is almost it's the check ins, okay, the validation that you need. So the training for me is once you've got a plan in place is make sure you're checking in with a team that we're, we're moving towards that goal and always offering a voice. We're very big on if you need anything, if there's a different way that we need to be doing something. Sometimes you bring somebody in with knowledge, okay, that might have a better way of doing something. Well, I want to know what that is. I want you to bring that to the table. Let's discuss. And if we all agree that it's a better way, then we're going to do it. Does that awesome. make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. So as we wrap up, I mentioned there would be some rapid fire questions at the end. So I've got a yep. few rapid fire questions. These answers can be short and sweet. Um, number one, what is the key to success for you? Uh, to me is success uh, to me is basically um, is achieving kind of what your what, what, what your goals are. Right. So success to me, to you, and to everybody else is different, okay? So um, I, I, and I always teach this, you know, in real estate, is that everyone's always trying to do what someone else is doing, right? You want to be like that person. The, the thing is, unless you break a business down, you don't know what goes on, right? And I always used to say about real estate, like someone would say, hey, I just did this deal or I made this much money, Right. Well, that's great, but how did they do it? What went into that? You don't know that they marketed two years ago that they've done a hundred follow-up calls and they made X amount of money. Well, no one told you that part, right? Yeah. So <laughs> ten um, years to be an overnight success, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think you know, success to me is is always 
I get the kick of hearing the stories where I can obviously build a business that's going to impact other businesses. That's what success is to me. Again, I come from a coaching background. I used to be a golf professional, so I used to teach golf. I then went into real estate coaching and I'm here. So the ability, you know, for for me to be able to grow someone else's business bigger than mine, fantastic, right? That is what success is. Love that, love that. So there's lots of other business owners listening to this today. What's your one piece of advice for other business owners? Um, Stay focused. Stay awesome. focused. What's one say, book you're reading right now or have read most recently? Building a business, I would, for the business side, I would say profit first. Awesome. Actually, he's going to be our guest speaker at an event we're having Thursday, the author. Very good. Um, Mike McCallowicz. McCallowicz, um, yep. If you had to choose one area of your business that you could wave a magic wand and immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Um, that's a good one. Uh, which everyone's going to probably be the same, but more qualified leads. Yeah, I think you're right. That's a very common answer. Absolutely. Marketing, yep. right? Yep. <laughs> and you're doing, I mean, you're putting a, a significant investment in. It sounds like you're doing the right thing. So um, there can never be too much marketing. Um, unless yeah. you don't have systems and processes in place, right? Because if you've got leads and you can't service them, then you can also be in trouble in another way. I'm going to wrap up with one final question. What is most inspiring to you today? Um, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> What's most inspiring? Um, I I get inspired on kind of other people's stories, you know? Uh, walks of life, backgrounds, and it's not even success or big business. It's like, how did they come from whatever background and how did they get into this? Like, you know, even me, like, I'm from England. I was a golf professional that came to the US that got into real estate that's now sitting here with you running an outsourcing company. Like it just, I, and I get a kick off whatever story that is, you know, it, it could be a mm -hmm. mom of seven kids that still works and managed to keep the house like that to me is, is inspiring because it's, I think other people's success and other people's stories at whatever level, uh, I think that's when I'm like, you know what, things could always be worse, you know? That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, people are what make the world go around. And if we stop worrying about things and focus on people, I think the world would be a happier place. Thank you so Absolutely. much for your time today, Gavin. Um, I can't wait for people to listen to this interview. Um, now, the one question I think I forgot to ask earlier on is how, if somebody's interested in a VA, how would they get in touch with you? Um, or is there a website? How would you like people to reach out to you? Yeah, uh, so the best way, um, again, just come and have a conversation. You can come and book a call. If you go to uh, www.dafco.com slash Mary Ann, which is going to be your link, um, and that just keeps us then tracked on, on who's watching your show. Uh, and also, you know, we can give, we like to give a, a great service, um, but they'll also get kind of the VIP. <laughs> uh, you'll, they'll be probably be working with Candace directly as well, um, which is our lead account manager. Um, so we'll definitely take care of them. So dafco.com slash Marianne. If you go there, come and have a chat with us and we'll look after you. Awesome. And I'll make sure I put that down below the video. So when folks are looking for it, it's there. Thank you so much for your time, Gavin. And I look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. Take Absolutely. care. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye-bye.